Those so, so I do appreciate everyone being here. Um, you know, there are people here from obviously St. Louis, Springfield, um, Columbus, Carthage, Joplin, Northwest Arkansas. On the video, I had my Hot Springs friends there. So I just appreciate the time that you took to come here and celebrate this with us. I want to say just a few things about my, my mother. Um, she's probably the most important person in this room tonight. Um, she's 85 years old. She um, decided she was going to come to this celebration. She hates to travel. She <laughs> hates to sleep outside of her own bed. <laughs> but she made it, and she is here with me tonight. So the things that you have to understand about my mother is she really has been the most influential person in my life. So she's a registered nurse. Um, she went to St. Joseph's School of Nursing. She worked at St. Joe's for 20 plus years before she retired. When we moved into the new hospital in 1991, she was still working there. I was asked to be the patient move coordinator. I was working on the night shift at that time um, as the house supervisor. She was a nurse on one of the floors when I was the house supervisor at night. So when I would have to call and say, Mother, I need you to send one of your nurses to another floor because they're short on the other floor, she would always say, now Michelle, and I would always <laughs> say, I wouldn't do it if I didn't need to, and I'll come and help you if you need me. So it was an interesting dynamic to have, uh, be the house supervisor with your mother working on the floor. So, you know, she, she really, um, she was the one that influenced me to be a nurse. Um, Obviously, I had a lot of brothers and sisters. There's nine of us. I got a nursing kit for every birthday and every Christmas from the time I was two years old. <laughs> every time anyone was sick, Mama would come and get me, and we would go take care of them together. <laughs> so I was programmed to be a nurse, and I was so fortunate that that is a career that I chose and that she worked at Mercy. She worked at St. Joe's, and so naturally, I was going to work where she was. So that's how I got to be with Mercy for as long as I have, just, she, she was just a tribute to that. Um, and I have to say a few things about Rick. I know he <laughs> says a things about me, so. <laughs> <laughs> We've been married 36 years, so we dated three years before that. We met when I was a nursing assistant in 1977. Um, he was a respiratory therapist at St. Joe's, and so I was a nursing assistant, and we met. We started dating then, and um, you know, he's been just an amazing um, support for me for many, many years. All the 37 years that I've been with Mercy, he has been there to support me. So I remember in 1993, I decided to go back and get my master's degree. And I was the director of the med surge nursing units at St. Joe's full time. And we had three little kids. And he stepped up and said, no problem, you can go to school and work full time and I'll be Mr. Mom. And I bet if you ask my kids, they would say he was the best Mr. Mom there ever was. <laughs> so he went to the PTO meetings, I mean he did everything, he was just phenomenal. So then, you know, when we decided to go from Hot Springs to Northwest Arkansas, he was in a little bit of denial because we had been there for so long. and. Um, but he supported me and we moved to Northwest Arkansas. He left a job that he had been working 25 years with developmentally disabled adults. So he had to uproot and go with me to Northwest Arkansas where he got a job taking care of or, or helping um, developmentally disabled kids. So he did that for the six years we were in Northwest Arkansas. And then I said, well, guess what, Rick? We're <laughs> uprooting again and we're going to Joplin. So why don't you just take it easy this time? So um, fortunately, he didn't get another job. And um, in January, we moved in, in um, 2012. Many of you know, in January of 2015, Rick had a life, um, uh, an event that should have taken his life. He had a dissected aorta. He had a 1% chance of surviving that. Um, he was very calm with the prayers of every person in this room and across Mercy, um, and the faith he had and the will to live, and the dear Lord working through Dr. Meyer, who is in the back back there, who's on the video, he honestly saved Rick's life. 
So that was in January of 2015. We moved into the new hospital in March, so he did this two months before we were moving into the new hospital. Five months after his first dissection, we had to go to Houston, and he had a second open heart surgery because he had aneurysms on his aorta. He did great there. We were there for two weeks. We got back to Joplin. Four days later, he had a seizure and an intracranial bleed and had to have a craniotomy. That one almost did me in. So, within a six month period of time, he had a dissected aorta, a second open heart surgery, and a craniotomy. And look at him today. He is what we call a It, but I will tell you, Dr. Byer is just a phenomenal, I, we couldn't have been in a better place at the time. I was so thankful when he was there and he came right up and said, I'm here, I'm going to take care of him. Um, so, you know, 2015 was a tough year. Um, you know, they say God never gives you more than you can handle, and I believe that. I doubted it a couple of times. I thought, like, really? <laughs> so, it just seems I'm so thankful to have had the career I've had. And I'm very thankful to be able to now retire and spend as much quality time as I possibly can with Rick and the kids and the grandkids and my mother in Hot Springs. We have a little house right next door to her, so I'll be able to be down there with her. So it's just um, God has led me every step of the way in my entire journey with mercy, and he's leading me now to the next stage in my life, and I'm just very appreciative of that. So that's... All I wanted to say, and I do appreciate everybody being here, and I hope you have safe travels home.